I learn and teach. So be before I started washing bodies, I actually learned the whole process to actually teach the, the kids from the Muslim schools. So we have all the Muslim schools come to the Preston Mosque in the first term, and it is important that they know the process of uh, doing the Janaza. It's a, it's a co community responsibility, right? The whole Jama, it is their responsibility to actually train some brothers to do the job. Everybody doesn't need to do it, but if you're a part of the Jama, then you have to train some brothers to do it. The proper way and follow the Quran and Sunnah, inshallah. Wa alaikum salam. If you want chairs, you can get one from the room here. If you're happy to sit on the floor, no problems. Yeah, let's see. Is okay? Yeah. Okay. Ready? Okay. Bismillah, brothers. Jazakallah khair for coming. Alhamdulillah. Uh, inshallah, the Sheikh will take you through the funeral process. And inshallah, during the process, you can ask questions. Uh, the idea is to allow Alam when the opportunity might come for us to do this. So we never know. Yeah. Uh, people may pass away any time. There's no guarantee. Yeah. There's no uh, expiry date written on us. Right? Any time we could pass away. Any time it could be a need. And it's better for one who is close to the person to do the funeral right. So it is, it's, uh, it's a neema from Allah that we are able to fulfill something that is, that's the last thing you could do for a person who has passed away, right? Uh, when I, the, the only time I have done this is when my grandmother passed. So that's the first time I actually got into the grave, put her in the grave and all that. It was a very different experience for me. And that's the last thing I could do for her. Now at the moment, I can do dua for her, I can do zikr, but as an amal, as a for, for physical body, nothing else I can do for her. So uh, this is an opportunity for us in two ways. One, to learn this, to internalize, because tomorrow we will be on this table. Figuratively, not exactly this table, figuratively, we will be on this table somewhere, somewhere or other. And it's better for us that our generation actually take care of us. I would expect my kids are very small so <laughs> they'll make a good for us. But I would expect, I would hope, I will pray, that my son would actually do my uh, funeral rites. Uh, Alhamdulillah, the, the service there, there's legal requirements, certain things, but certain things obviously there are flexibility, and it would be something that we should encourage our children to also learn. Because it's not something for just for the masjid to take care. The masjid needs us to be part of it. As he said, we, he learned it, hence he's teaching us. So we come here to learn, inshallah we'll teach it. Jazakallah khair, I'll take okay, care. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, before we start the process, we have to start with Bismillah. Right? So, it's highly encouraged that all the, the brothers, the, the, the people who can uh, do the washing is a man has to do the washing for a male, the sisters do for the female, a father can do it for the mother, the mother can do it for the father, but uh, we don't encourage it because uh, a mother will be emotionally, like, you know, charged, so it's very hard for her. So there are sisters who can do that for us, and uh, the family can wash the, the son's body or the daughter's body. But we encourage the family to take part in it because that's the last time you actually are close to the dead person, right? So it's encouraged that you help the brothers who are doing the washing, like, you know, soaping the body with the, uh, with the sponge, putting the perfume on the, the, the places of prostration, those little things that you can help the brothers, because we need to move the body to make sure 
We nicely sponge the back, make sure the body is clean, right? So it's encouraged that you take part in the washing. There are some, some situations where we, we do it ourselves because the family is too scared to come, come and take part. The, the strange thing is like, you know, when the soul is taken away, you're afraid to even sit next to it or sleep next to it. When the soul leaves the body, nobody wants to be near you. That's the reality. So the soul without the body, the body without the soul, there's only one place for it. That is where Adam came from, clay. So it goes back to where it came from, but it is the, the soul that tastes the death. The body is dead, all the systems have shut down, but the soul actually tastes the death. So you start with Kullu Nafsin Dai Khatul Maut, Fainama Ujuru, Fainama Tuafwa. So just a moment. So we have the, the ayah in Surah Ali Imran. So this is a good reminder for all of us. Kullu Nafsin Dai Khatul Maut. فَإِنَّمَا تُوَفَّوْنَ وُجُورَكُمْ يَوْمَ الْكِيَامَةِ فَمَنْ زُوزِيَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَلَا يُذْكِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَاز وَمَا الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاوُ الْغُرُورِ So it's a very interesting ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned here. Right? Now what is your idea of success? Because this, at this moment, this is the de defining moment of success. So we all know in this dunya, success is about getting a, uh, getting a high ETA score, right? Or getting a degree. The day you graduate, it's success. The day you find a beautiful woman, right as far as uh, partner and you get married, the day you get married is success. The day you fi find a good job that pays you a good salary, that's success, right? So the, the, the success in this dunya, the day you taste success, the next day is history. Success in this dunya, the next day is history. Like the grand finals, they were like all the, the fans and the team and the coach. It was a big, like a ego boost, but the next day it's forgotten. But this success, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, every soul shall taste death, every, and, ev and every one of us will be paid their wages in full. The wages of a what? Not for the work you did in this dunya, but for the good deeds that you did for the hereafter. So the question here is, the question here is, what have we prepared for that moment? If we truly believe in Allah, we also need to believe that there's life after death. So the question we all need to ask ourselves is, well, what is, what have we prepared for it? So every soul shall taste death and you'll be paid your wages in full. But the true success we are talking about here is the one whose face has been distanced from the fire and entered into Jannatul Firdaus. He is the successful one. And that success is for eternity, forever. No pain, no grief, no suffering. That is the true success. So success in this dunya is about you celebrate for one day, but next day is history. But the, the, the ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about success is the one whose face has been distanced from the fire and he has entered into paradise, then he should be smiling. Okay, so we start 
So that was part of the ayah and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this is, this, this life is just, uh, just fun and games and it's a delusion. Don't waste your time. You have to strive for this success. That is how do you, how do you achieve that? Is believe in Lord, your Lord, who is your Lord? What is your deen, Islam? And who is your messenger who brought this message to you? And those are the three principles that you'll be questioned on the grave. Who is your Lord? What is your deen? And who is your messenger? If you can answer those questions, it can only happen if you have fulfilled those conditions before death comes to you. Right? So when death comes, there are a few things that we need to do. Alhamdulillah, we are Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet wasallam has given us all the criteria or everything that we need to prepare for this. Tells us why, why we are here, why, where we, we have come from, why are we here and where are we going. And alhamdulillah, since we have that knowledge, we have to prepare for it. One of the the sweet the sweetness of iman is that a believer is constantly preparing for death, right? So we know that when when somebody is passing away, we have to remind that person to say la ilaha illallah. Just la ilaha illallah. You bear witness with sincerity. You say those, and those would be the last words. And once he has said that. He shouldn't utter anything else. So we remind the dead person to say those things. And the, the soul actually leaves from the feet up. When Adam alayhi salam, the soul entered him, he, when the soul was right up to his waist, he got up and he actually wanted to, uh, he was amazed at what he was seeing. He wanted to get up and taste what he was seeing, but so when so only when the soul reaches the toes that he is able to function as a human being. So the the cold, the feet start getting cold, and you'll see that the eyes are actually following the soul. He'll follow the eyes will actually follow the soul leaving his body, and the angel of death doesn't discriminate, discriminate you uh, with, by your age, by the color, nothing. He comes and just takes the soul. We don't have any privileges because we are white or black, a Muslim, an Arab, non-Muslim, non-Arab. He doesn't, that doesn't bother him because his uh, condition and his command is to take the soul at the time that's written. So, once the soul has been taken away, there are certain things a Muslim has to do. As a family, you close the eyes, because the eyes are following and it looks strange. So, we make sure the eyes are closed, and I have tied this here to make sure the mouth is closed. That helps us when we are washing the body. When you bathe in the body, we don't want the water to get into the uh, into the mouth and we close the eyelids and then we make sure the two feet are, we can tie a small uh, bandage or ribbon or something to hold the toes together because once the, the soul is taken out and the body gets stiff then it's very hard for us to do all those things and sometimes we have a problem going into the putting the body into the into the coffin, right? And we can put the hands, right hand over the left hand, right? So what, what, what are the things we need to do? Remind the person to say la ilaha illallah, and then make sure his eyes are closed, his mouth is closed, put his hands, right hand over the left hand, make sure his feet are together, right? And we are good to go, inshallah. But you will remind, you will call in, by that time you will inform the Preston Mosque or any mosque that is closest to you to prepare for the Janazah. 
So as, as, uh, as members of the family, you have to make sure you get a death certificate, right? And uh, that has to be, without the death certificate, we can't do anything like booking the, the, the burial plot and all that. They need uh, evidence of the, the death certificate, okay? So, so that's, uh, the, usually the bodies that don't have, if the body dies of unknown circumstances, then it ends up in the coroner's office, where they have to check you out. Sometimes they have to cut you up. Usually they scan the body and they know it's a heart attack or a, a, a tumor in the brain or something. The scan will tell them. So they don't need to cut you up. Sometimes the accidents happen, then it goes to the coroner's for investigation. And until the coroner says, okay, he died f due to the, the trauma of the accident, then they'll cer certify the death. And then we go and collect the body. Right? So it is, yeah. So if someone passes at home, yeah. Uh, usually the GP, the, the thing is at home, if he's an old person and then he dies of natural causes, by, he has reached the end of the road, so there is no drama, so the GP can give you a death certificate. So at that time, sometimes you might rush the person to the emergency, and then the emergency will give you a death certificate. So no involvement of corona? Huh? Yeah, we try to avoid. As a family, you don't want the body to go to the coroners. So if you call the Preston mouth, they'll tell you what to do. Right? So but the first uh, place of contact should be uh, Jamal in the Preston mosque. His line is open 24-7. Or usually most of the masjids have a 24-7 uh, number for janazas. So, always uh, keep them informed. Don't wait for the last minute to rush, you know. And also, also one of the things that came up was that you have to have one person in the family doing the instructions. Sometimes the mosque gets calls from like, you know, the, the nephew and the, the uncle. and So, we don't know whom to take instructions from. So, we get confused here. Because when we put the details in the application for the cemetery, we have to make sure that one person is responsible for that and he'll be responsible for paying the cost of all these things. Right? So that is, uh, yeah. So after that has happened, then the Preston Mosque will go and pick the body up from the, the mortuary, yeah, or from the coroner. They will do all of that. And we have the facilities for about five, six bodies to be in the Janaza room. We have facilities, state of the art. After we rebuild this whole thing, we also made sure we had enough room for us to do the jobs. Alhamdulillah. So, okay, so now the body is in the cold room. So on the day of the janaza, once everything is booked and ready to go, then we bring the body out and we lay it out on the washing, washing table, right? So we have to cover the aura. For the male, it's from the, the belly button past the knees, right? And for the female, it's from the, from the neck right down to the ankles. Right? So, the, once the body has, we take the body from the body bag, we take these things out, we have to take all the tags, hospital tags, we have to cut them, then usually they come in pyjamas, a, a hospital gown, sometimes they have died uh, playing soccer or something, so they come in their jerseys, their shorts and their stockings, so we don't uh, have to really take it out piece by piece. We just cut it off, the arms, 
the sin from the, the body parts, make sure and take everything out. Sometimes if there's nappies, right? We come to this world weak, then we get strong, and then we get weak again. To the point we don't have control over any of our bodily functions. So at the end of the journey, you're back in diapers. You come into this world and they put you in diapers, and when you're about to leave, you go back in diapers. So we have to take all of that out and take all the hospital tags out, make sure there are, if there are bandages like, you know, plasters, <coughs> we have to make double sure that it's not oozing, we will get on the kafan and things. We might uh, put a new, fresh dressing or we might just keep it if it's a clean dressing. Usually the hospital, they put a clean dressing before they send ship the body out. So they come in the body bag, we take the body bag out and we have to roll, roll the body like that and shove all the body bag to the, to the center. Then we move it up and then take all the body bag out. Same with the clothes and things. We have to uh, roll the whole body, then move all the stuff to the center of the body. Then we move him over and then pull everything out and we are ready to go. Alhamdulillah. Yes. For example, in case of an accident, somebody's hands cut off. Yeah. So those uh, things we have to dress them up. We actually need uh, experienced experience nurse to advise us. So we have a uh, bandage, plaster, that's waterproof. So we can put that before we bathe the body. Yeah. Arms back in its place, is it? So the arms are back. We haven't come to that situation yet. Yeah. If he was martyred, then we, we don't need to bathe him at all. His blood and all that, we wrap him up and uh, bury him. So what's happening in, in uh, Gaza and things, you, you don't know whose arm and whose leg belongs to which body. I mean, yeah, so the, talking about Gaza, uh, you know, when a body, when p humans are being killed, indiscriminately, it is a sign that the end is near. So us sitting here and talking about death is good for us. Because what is happening there, they are preparing for death to come any moment. Can you imagine the situation there? They are waiting for death to come. They live in hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save them, but it's either you are martyred or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us victory. So learning about death is a good thing. Remind yourself about death. So if there are cuts and bruises and things, we try to wrap it up neatly, right? Put gauze and then use the uh, waterproof uh, uh, plasters so we can do our job. Right? So now everything is clean. We don't have any hospital tags. Right? The first thing that we need to do, right, is we take some uh, soap and rinse the private parts here. There are two things that we need to do before <coughs> we proceed. Right? So the first is you wash, your, wash the hands nicely. Before that, you say Bismillah and nicely wash wash the hands, the right hand, then you wash the left hand, right? And then you rinse the private parts, and we wash the private parts. The first, the reason we do the private parts is we don't know what the, the brother has been up to in the, the night before. So there is janaba, we have to clean the hands and the private parts, right? And then at the, at, the time of, uh, at the time of the soul being taken, you're scared. 
So you can discharge some uh, waste. Just the, the fact that you're, you're almost on, you're on, on your deathbed, that experience can, uh, you might uh, pass some waste matter. So the janaba has to be done first, and then the, the najasa has to be clean. So we have to move the body and nicely make sure there is no dirt so that the, the kafan doesn't get soiled. Right? So that is the first thing. What did, uh, what did we say? Wash the hands, wash the private parts, and then wash the back. Right? So once we have done that, the first process in the, the washing is the bathing, is we have to do proper wudu. The same wudu that you would do for yourself. But before we do start washing the body, we have to make sure you want for your brother that which you want for yourself. Make sure the water is the right temperature. So usually we have the hose coming from the ceiling and we make sure the water is the same way you want the shower. You will, doesn't matter even the person is dead. We follow the, the, the hadith that says you want for your brother that which you want for yourself and make sure the water is perfect and then the first thing we do is take, after we do the private part, is we do wudu, right? Bismillah, the right hand, the left hand. Then we take water and wa wash his f the nose first, sorry. Wash the mouth and the nose, but we don't let the water go in. So we take the, the wet hands and wipe his n uh, mouth and nose, and then we take water and then wash his face from, from the hairline right down to his chin and the ears. Once we have done that, then we wash the hands, right past the elbow, right? The right hand and the left hand, wash all of it past the elbow, right? Then with the wet hands that you have, you wipe the head from the hairline to the back and then bring the hand back. And then we wash, wipe the ears. Only once, right? This process is only once. Then once we have done all that, then we wash the ankles, above the ankles, the legs, right up the ankles, right? So the right leg and the left leg and in between the toes. Because once the legs are frozen, is you have to actually move the, the toes and make sure all of those areas have got water. Right, so now we have finished the wudu. Right, now we are ready to actually start showering. So we always start from the right side, right side, the top, top uh, body, the, the right hand, the body, the left hand, then the right leg and the left leg. So I, I take the hose, I close the mouth and start nicely washing from the head down, always from the head down, right? And I do the left, left, left side of his face, the right hand, then all of the body and the left hand, do all of the, put the hose inside, make sure all of the pa parts of his body are nice, nice and winced. Only then, then the family can take part on it, can take part in the washing. So we put, give each uh, member of the family some uh, sponge and they can start soaping the body. You can put some water and start nicely soaping the body, the right, right hand, armpits, you do the body, the, then you move, move the body and make sure you do that part. And then sometimes we move this, that way and do this, this side and then do the, the legs, all of it. A thorough soap the thing nicely so that he smells good. He's perfect. So we did, first we do one rinse completely, then we soap the body and then we do a final rinse where we take all the soap 
away from the body and we make sure that the hose pushes all the soap to the where there is a small drain right around and it go we make sure there is no soap at all so we are completely taken all the soap out now he's perfect right so the final wash so we rinse the body first then we soap the body and rinse it that's the second wash and the final wash is where we have a small bucket and we put some kafur or cedar leaf or musk we put some perfume into the water and then we take a, a jug and wash the body nice now start bathing it with perfume water right we do the same exercise right side left side the right leg and the left leg and now he is smelling good mashallah right so once we have done all of that then we take some perfume right we can use the the spray we can take some cotton cotton uh, wool and spray the cotton wool we have to now after we dry we use the we put the the perfume only after we dry the body so we have to pat dry the body okay we don't rub the body sometimes the wool all uncles their skin is very sensitive so we actually open the towel and we just pat dry the body and make sure it's nice and dry we have to do the front and the back make sure all the legs and all that is nice and dry so once once all of that that is done we might just use this towel and take this off because this is soaking now right so what do we do we do pat dry so once the, that is all done then we take the perfume and apply it on the places of prostration is the forehead the nose right the two palms the two knees and the bottom of the toes that's the that's the one that's really prostrating to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it has to be the bottom of the toes so we apply the perfume on the the palms on the knees right right and left and then we do the then we do the toes after all of that has been done now we are ready to do the kafan has everybody got it so first we uh, clean the private parts then we do the wudu has as we do it ourselves and then three washes right first we rinse the body then we soap the body and then rinse all the the soap away and then we use the bucket and perfume the bucket and then give it a nice wash and then we dry pat dry okay so once all of that is done we are ready to kafan the body the the we use three pieces of cloth right the first one has a little hole cut like a poncho yeah so this is the first piece of cloth so is there is the hole cut so the head can stick out and we cover the first layer so we take the the wet towel away we are ready to kafan the body so we have to make sure that you kafan it in a ma manner that's befitting your brother because it's amazing how like you know sometimes as individuals we like to have our clothes nice and clean so even our brother there was a incident where the uh, i had forgotten to clean his nose so the brother who was the son he said the uh, brother he's got some stuff in his nose can you clean it because my father is 
a person who doesn't like these little thingamajigs that are like, you know, sticking out of your nose. So he said, can I take a piece of uh, cotton and do it? I said, do it. Because you know, you are close to your father, the little thing that we, we overlook, but the family can jump in and do those little things that your father liked. He, he wouldn't want to be seen with something sticking out of his nose. So, I encouraged him to do it. So, that's important that we make sure that... So, when we wrap the body, we make sure... After inshallah the shaykh finishes, I want you to come over and try it Okay, so we start with the right side and nicely make sure it's nice and tight. Then we pull the other side. Can you cut the nails if the nails are big? That you have to do it only before he dies. After he's dead, it is the obligatory for the family to do those things. You know, cutting the nails and all, you should be doing it for your father or your mother. Not after the person is dead because his, chap his book is closed. So while we are alive, while he is alive, if you want the hasanat, you have to do it before he dies. After he dies, his book is closed. There is no hasanat after that. So you have to do it while he is alive and he knows that you are doing it for, for him and he will make dua for you, inshallah. So, neatly, I wrap, make sure everything is nice and tight. So, that is the first piece of cloth. Now we are ready to do the second piece. I usually take both sheets together. We can do it using one sheet at a time, or take both together. So, the family actually wants to see the body, the, the face. The family likes to see the, the face of the dead, dead person. So how do I show the, the face is I make sure I roll it so that the face is nice and ready. So the other parts, I neatly tuck it inside, right? So these ex extended pieces, this is to help the, when we are putting the body into the grave, it helps us to actually hold, hold the ends and we have two ties so that we can hold it from there and then we can lower the body into the grave using these extended bits. So once we have finished that, then I... So this is the last piece of cloth. Make sure it's nice and tight. So I usually have somebody to help me. So it's not a job for one person because you don't want to break your back. You don't want to break your back doing the job. We have to always make sure that there is no risk to the brothers working to... There is no risk to you first. Right? Yeah. So now I've got to get the ties. So
So we have two short ones for the ends, and we have two long ones for one to the knees and one to the the chest area. Yeah, you can come around the table. You can hide. Yeah. Even the adults can come if the boys don't want to come. Yeah. Come, 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 come. We came for this workshop, right? Come. <laughs> yeah. So we are tie a ribbon, okay? Make sure you tie a ribbon because these uh, ties have to be loosened inside the grave. Should we leave it like this? So no, no. Tighten tight, it first. Tight, okay. Yeah. And then put a ribbon. So like a shoelace? Yeah. And what about the feet? Do we need to ribbon the toes? Huh? Do we need to to uh, ribbon the toes? Here. After, after, no, no, this one. No, no. no. Once you no. tie it up, the coffin is tied. Yeah. Okay. So we don't need to cover the face? No, the, the fa family wants to okay. kiss the bodies. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Come on in, come on in. Boys, boys, we all want some ties. We'll, we'll remove the ties and we'll tie it again. And we'll do the entire thing once again. Can, can I uh, continue? Yeah. Yeah, let me continue and then after that they can have a go. Okay, cool. Okay. Have a seat, inshallah. We'll finish it off and we'll do it again. Okay? Okay, uh, let me continue because I haven't finished. Okay, so the, these long ones are to put the body into the grave. These things are to help us hold it and let it put it into the grave again. And the amazing thing, the amazing thing is when somebody is born, Alhamdulillah, they're born Muslims, right? They are born strangers. A baby is a total stranger. Doesn't have a name. The children, the parents, they have no idea what type of a person it is. We have no, we don't know what his character is. So we come into this world as strangers and when we leave the, the dunya, we leave as strangers. Why? Because you lose your name. Once you are dead, the brothers say, where is the body? Can you bring the body? We are going to pray Janaza now. They don't call, bring Muhammad or Omar or Bilal, no. You have lost your name. You are a total stranger. You are going as a stranger. You leave your family, you leave everybody, and you go to this grave as a total stranger, no name. They know, never call you by name. Subhanallah, and you come into this world as a child, you're a total stranger. Until your father gives you a name and does all the requirements of a newborn baby, only after that you know what kind of a person he is. So the Prophet said, be in this dunya as a stranger. Don't get too attached to the dunya. It's very difficult to leave this dunya when your heart is torn. All you cared about was collecting all the, all the wealth, the children, all, all of the dunya things. It's very hard to leave. Leave the dunya when the angel of death comes because you've got unfinished business. But a person who prepares for the hereafter does all the things that are required it's easy for him to leave the dunya and it's also easy for the soul to leave the body. A person who, who all, all his life he wants this dunya, it's, a, it's like wanting the vomit to go back the way it came from. That, that, is, that is the type of, one of the scholars described it saying, a disbeliever wants his soul to go back and not leave his body. It's like, you know, you throw up 
and you want that thing to go back. It's impossible. And then uh, there's something very interesting I need to tell you. For the women, we, we have five pieces of cloth, and before we close, close the three pieces, we have to cover from the belly button to the ankles. We put like, uh, like a izar, uh, like a sarong. So we wrap the bottom part of the sister's body, and we are allowed to use pads and things if she's having menstruation or childbirth problems. We are allowed to use pads. We are allowed to wrap a piece of cloth to hold the pad together. And then we put the izar. And then, the, the, so that is uh, three pieces of cloth plus the izar, which is four pieces. And we have the fifth piece, which is, the, which is, which is actually a hijab. So there was this. So we tie the hijab before we put the uh, three pieces of cloth, and we cover the, her hair and tie it round her neck and tuck it inside. So there was this uh, celebrity uh, actress in Bollywood. Her name is Sana Khan. So she, was, she had everything. She had fame, she had fortune, she had celebrity status fan club, everything, right? So what happened was she used to go to Umrah and all that. So she used to wear hijab and take it off. So one day she saw herself in a grave. She had a dream where she saw herself in a grave and the whole grave was in fire. She was being burnt in the grave. And she woke up from that uh, horrible experience and she realized it's a, a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that she needs to get her act together. So that day she decided after much consultation that she has to toe the line, come back to the straight path. And she said something very interesting. She said, don't let the last day on this earth be the first day you will put hijab. For all those sisters who uh, neglect the hijab and only use it like a convertible, it comes on, goes out. Kids come to school in the hijab. When they step out of the school gates, the hijab comes off. So she said, don't let the last day on earth, by default, be the first day you wear hijab. How profound her words. She, she's on YouTube, so you can go to Sana Khan and uh, uh, listen to her story. So this is a reminder for all the sisters that you give up what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happy for you, and then on the deathbed you have to put it on, whether you like it or not. So that's, that's the, the fifth piece of cloth we have, which is a small hijab for her, alhamdulillah. So, when, when the ba baby is born, one of the scholars said, it's interesting, when the baby is born, everybody is happy and joyful and all that, but the poor baby is crying. That's a good sign, because the doctor, when he sees the baby is responding, that's a good sign. But what the doctors don't realize is that is the first time he feels the presence of the shaitan. Because the shaitan digs his stomach and makes him cry and says, uh, I'm your enemy. I'm not, not, I'm not your enemy. He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said the shaitan is. So his first trial is his experience with the shaitan. So when babies are born, they all start crying. And everybody else is happy and joyful and MashaAllah, they're congratulating each other. Everybody congratulates the father and the mother. And then, for a true believer, his life starts after death. Remember, I was talking to you about the success? Because if he did all, follow the three principles of who is your Lord, 
what is your deen and follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in all, all his sunnah, then you should be smiling here. The, the brother is smiling and everybody else is crying. When the baby is born, everybody is happy and the baby is crying. But when the dead person leaves this dunya, he should be smiling, we should be smiling. If he did the right thing, and everybody else will be crying. So these are things we need to keep in mind and work, strive. It's not an easy task. We have to all strive. The end goal, remember I told you the success, the true defining moment of success is the success that is not history, but success for the hereafter to eternity. That is what we should be working for. So Jalakallahu Kairan for, for patiently listening to me is no, it's not an easy task. Death is not an experience that we all keep top of mind. But it's good to know because these lessons will help us on the deathbed to make sure that we say La ilaha illallah, that is a guarantee that you will enter paradise. Doesn't matter all the, the sins that you do. We live in hope. We live in hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us a good ending. We have to have good thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because at, at the moment of the soul is being taken out, we have to always make sure we have good thoughts about Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Victory is coming for the believers. If you look at the suffering the, the, in Gaza, we are living in hope, all of us. Whether we are in Gaza or outside of Gaza, we are living in hope that victory will be given, as promised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this life is a test. You need two ingredients to survive, patience and salah. Don't neglect those th two things. And when good things, kair happens, like they open the, the Rafa border so that aid can go in, we should fall on our faces and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mercy. So I've got these... Uh... Yeah, you all can dissect this body and have a look. No problem. So, uh, fathers, bring your sons. It's an <laughs> opportunity for you to give them this learning. So the idea was for fathers and sons to come and learn. So please come over, inshallah. Uh, bring your sons. We learn time. We try it again. So, uh, so. so who takes over the body from there? Huh? Who it's takes over the body to the graveyard or the Jarana? You don't need to. I just missed one one part of it, which is the Janaza prayer, right? For the boy, the Imam stands in line with the the head. For the women, he he should stand in line with the waist, right? How we arrange the body is the male first, the male child next, the woman. After that, and the male, female uh, child after that. So the same way as in the sala, we have to arrange the bodies like that. So if the whole fa family got wiped out in a crash on the road, then we have to arrange the bodies, the coffins, after that. So we have, uh, we have four, uh, the, the, the leaflet I gave you has four takbirs. Allahu Akbar, we say, we say Surah Al-Fatiha, then we say Allahu Akbar and do the Tashahud, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin, right, right to the end. We say Allahu Akbar, make the dua for the dead person. If it's a small baby, we make dua for the parents that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them something better, right? Make the dua, then we say Allahu Akbar, and then give salams to the right and the left. But when you go to haram, 
Sometimes they only do one, one salam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, and that's done. Who takes the body to the graveyard for We have the hearse. Okay. We have the hearse, we have the brothers. Sometimes the brother who washes also takes the body to the cemetery. Right. Yeah. What is the total cost at this? Time? Total cost can be up to 12,000. So the grave is like around 8,000. The janaza or the washing and all that is about another 4,000. When I bought my plot with my family, three tiers, three bodies, it was around 1,500, about 20 years ago. Now it's 8,000. Now it's only two, two tiers. Two yeah. They, they two bodies can go in. Yeah. Levels. Yeah. yeah. Two yeah. Levels. Total 8,000. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Is no, no, no. no, no. One piece. Yeah, the whole plot is 8,000. Whole plot 8,000, which yeah. can be used for two bodies. Yes. No. But yeah. not, not all symmetries allowed. Yeah, so you would, you would be paying for the diggers. Yeah, so you have to pay for the diggers. If you own the plot and the land, you have to pay for the digging and all those extra bits. Yeah. So it'll be less, a bit cheaper if you already bought the plot. Yeah. Does the hospital charge anything as well, or all the services are covered by medical? Yeah, yeah. There's no charge. Yeah, so we have to go and pick up the body, bring it, put it in the cold room. Uh, but we have to pay the brothers washing the bodies. If the hospital gives clearance at night, then yeah. Okay. Yeah. Late at night. Yeah. You wait till tomorrow morning, or is yes. yes. That is the law of the land. Yes. So we we have to follow it. But in other countries like Sri Lanka and all. Immediately they will bury the body the same night. Yeah. yeah. If he died in the afternoon, by the night they have finished the. So here you wait till Fajr or Zohar? What's the usual? Zohar. Zohar. Yeah, yeah, because the, the cemetery is not working the way we work. Yeah. They don't get up for Fajr prayers. So they are ready. They have to get the diggers to dig up the grave and have everything ready for us. Usually it's after Zohar. So we can bury two bodies even in after the hall. The Sometimes there are two bodies. The body stays here or in the hospital or so the hospital if we have it at night? The hospital or once they are open. Yeah, so we pick it up in the morning. Okay. If we, the, past, the, the person passed away in the night, then we go in the morning and pick it. And if you already have bought your land, yeah. and how uh, you, you is but the person's responsibility to arrange the details are the No, no. You just give, give the deed, the details in the deed. Usually the mosque will have a copy of your... You buy it, they will buy it for you. They'll give you a deed. So you know the plot number, the row number, and section number, all that is there for you. So yeah. they, they arrange all Yeah, things. so if the family wants to go and visit the grave, they have all the details, so they can go and locate the, uh, yeah. Which cemetery is this? Which cemetery? Uh, Faulkner. For us, nearby is Faulkner. There's yeah. also one uh, close to uh, Trugani on that side as well. Bacchus Marsha. So, they're limited offspring. So, so other than death certificate, what other government documentation involved in this process? Uh, if any. Yeah, so we have like, you know, the migrant workers and all, then it gets a bit complicated. Because we have to get details from Malaysia or Indonesia or Pakistan. There are students who study here. They don't have extended family here. Then those things can delay the, the washing. Some they want the body shipped out. So we do the kafan and then put it into a body bag and then send it. They have uh, disposable coffins made from cardboard. Yeah. So some of the bodies that go back have to be embalmed. So the undertakers inject something into the body to preserve the, delay the uh, decomposition of the body. And so as long as you have a legal identity, the only thing you need is a 
if you don't, if you have a legal identity, yes. So if you are a citizen passport, whatever, the first thing they need to identify who you are. Once that is identified, they'll issue a death certificate. Once the death certificate is done, the process is can you serve this service? I hope there's enough. Once you get a legal identity, okay. then the hospital is there. So we um, I've experienced a case uh, last to last year myself personally, where it was a heart attack case. Uh, it was a friend's mother basically. And he was all the doctors who knew already that she's suffering with issues. And then she passed away in the ambulance on the way to the hospital. But still, her body was sent to coroner uh, for their report. And while being Muslims, we try our best to bury the person as soon as possible. Um, there was a lot of um, stress on us, and we tried to put a lot of pressure on the coroner, considering that hospital already knew. <coughs> Right. The doctor, the GP already knew what was going on, but still the coroner kept the body for I think four or five days that time. This was in 2021, I think, right here. Yeah. Do we have some facilities where we can actually convince or some, you know, so get the, the body is to contact the masjid to the funeral yeah. service? Yeah. Here, legally, we are very strict rules. You cannot do yeah. anything about it. Once yeah. the coroner, for whatever reason, so the main thing is if they yeah. put a condition of suspicion, yeah. that's the problem yeah. arises. If they add a suspicion case, and he, as the Sheikh said, they'll scan it. Yeah. If the scan doesn't clarify, then they'll have to <laughs> open it. What's your name? No. 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 Yeah. 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 So the, she, she was taken to the hospital while still alive. I think it was 9 o'clock in the night and COVID locked out as well. The COVID oh. played a big role. And the son was not allowed to travel oh, in the ambulance yeah. with her because of COVID and all that. And while on the way, he he see her off, see her off she was still alive. <coughs> but when they got to the hospital, she was gone. Yeah, right? that and happens. She was released from the hospital to the coroner, he couldn't get access to her. Yeah. That, that's common. So yeah. even in <coughs> cases, only when the, the masjid gets and releases it, yeah. you can't get access. Yeah. Once the body is declared dead, you can get the dead certificate. You can't see it till it comes to the masjid. Okay, brothers. Uh, we have. We'll quickly finish it off so we can come and try it out. The so chef will take us to the cleaning area to look at the food, how it's been cleaned. We have some refreshments. And all the brothers are interested to come to the uh, cemetery, we we'll go to the cemetery, we'll spend some time just to reflect and we'll come back. Uh, then we'll discuss. If the brothers stay in the cemetery, they don't want to go to the cemetery, they'll wrap it up over here. It's up to you guys. So, brothers, the fathers and sons, I'll give preference to them. Come over, untie the knot. Good option. What do you have to do? Untie, untie again. Untie the knot. Open the wrap.